Good afternoon everyone. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills and uh, I just want to wish everyone a happy holidays. I hope you all had an awesome Christmas with lots of good food, lots of good company and uh, looking forward to the new year. Uh, it's been a tough 2020 for a lot of people and uh, hopefully 2021 will be a whole lot better. Anyway, today I'm going to do uh, a little canning video based on um, some of the food that I had over Christmas holidays and that I usually have over Christmas but uh, rarely think about canning and that is uh, a rutabaga. Uh, some people call it turnip uh, but I, I understand that a turnip is the smaller version and uh, what I'm talking about is the big uh, purple uh, and purple on the outside and waxed. They're usually waxed from the grocery stores to prevent uh, them from drying out. Um, and they're yellow flesh and just love that. I mean all I do is uh, boil it, mash it up and uh, add a little bit of butter and salt and pepper and it is just so tasty. I really really enjoy it. And perfect vegetable for canning, I would think. I've never canned it before, but uh, I would assume that uh, once it's canned, all you have to do is warm it up, drain it, and uh, add my butter and salt and pepper. So, here we go. Today I'm going to can up some rutabaga. Okay, so if it wasn't clear what I was talking about, it is uh, this item that you can find at the grocery store. I may even try to grow some of this next year. Anyway, the hardest part, of course, is to <clears throat> clean it, cut it, and cube it. So that's what I'm in the process of right now. And uh, I did purchase three of these for this canning venture. And uh, I think that'll make a fair amount, considering it's only the two of us once again, and it's not something we're going to have at every meal. So. Uh, should be adequate amounts for the next little while anyway. Okay, so this is what I've done. I've cleaned. I've trimmed off the, the outer waxy exterior, peeled it, and now I'm cubing it so that we can uh, blanch and then can it. Okay, my second one, and probably the easiest way to cut these guys is to take the slice off the end and then use the flat side to stabilize it. Okay, so now I got my rutabagas all uh, uh, peeled, cubed, and what we're going to do now is we're going to blanch them for three minutes. So I've got a pot of water on the stove boiling to be able to blanch them. Okay, my water has now come to a boil, so I am going to blanch these for three minutes. I also have my um, not prepared, but it's on the stove. So we'll start off with half of these. 
careful not to uh, hurt myself. I've also prepared about 14 pint jars and I'm hoping that will be enough. If not, I'll have to just get more. Okay, so we'll bring this back up to a boil and then we'll blanch it for three minutes. That will help if I keep the lid on to bring it back up to a boil fairly quickly. Okay. Okay, so I've got my canner on with three quarts of water. So I'm starting to heat that up. I've also got a, uh, another pot of water on the stove, just plain water, because when we get these, okay, this has come to a boil, so I'm just going to put the timer on for three minutes, and uh, we'll let that go, and when it beeps, we'll take those out. But I've got some fresh water to boil to fill the jars up with, so now I just have to get my lids and rings ready, and some vinegar. Okay, my timer's just about ready to go off. I've got five seconds left. So I've got my, there we go. Okay, so now I will uh, take these out. Now part of the reason that you blanch these is that there's a lot of air in these, so that will also help to um, pack them in jars, but uh, they'll also a lot of foods. It's best to blanch. And this is one of them. Okay, so there's our first batch. And we'll put another one in. That worked out a bit better. Okay, now these are ready to... I've got my here in water. I've got my vinegar there. So these are ready to be put into jars and I've got my clean jars here. So just have to get some rings. Be back in a minute. Okay so now we just wrap our jars. Obviously a little too full, but we'll take care of that. So you want to leave one inch headspace, so well, that wasn't too full after all. Okay. Put out a little bit of salt, and I think I will. Okay. 
Teaspoon of salt per jar. It's not quite come to a boil yet, so just a half teaspoon per jar. as much as I can but I don't I do want to leave an inch head space so I've got three jars so far now we'll add the water boiling water want a slider chopstick. You can use any other plastic or a utility made especially for this. To me I find the chopsticks work just fine. So make sure that there is no air. And having blanched them certainly helps to remove a lot of air as well. Okay. And we still have one inch head space. Okay. Three are ready. Now we will take our vinegar, clean the edge, and we put a lid. and rings, finger tight. And they're ready to go in the can. And this is coming to a boil. So put the timer on for three minutes and we'll get back to you. Okay, my next batch is ready to come out, so we'll strain these. was more in this batch. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of salt again. It isn't even half a teaspoon, just a, just a tad. And I'm probably going to add more turnip tea to these jars once I fill it up with water. So I'm going to put water in, but not completely full, so that I have room to add more turnip should I wish to. And I'm sure I will want to. Again, you want to leave an inch of head space. Okay, and we'll fill up the rest with water. There's no air. Vinegar, clean the edge. These are hot. totally loaded up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine so far. Maybe a dozen.
Okay, the timer once again is just about to go off, and that will be my last batch uh, for the day. Um, I've got nine pint jars in the camera so far, and I will likely need another um, ring. I can use this one. Yes, absolutely. I only have the one that there it is, okay. Turn my timer off. And we'll drain the rest of it. just going to get that pot off the stove and out of my way. Okay, here I'm going to fill up the last. We'll start off with three jars. Might take four. No, there's no harm in packing these down, none whatsoever. But you do want to make sure that you leave enough headspace, that's all. Okay, so we've got four in there. And when we get the water in, it might pack down just a bit more. So just adding a bit of salt to each one again. my water. Now you don't hear too of, of um, rutabagas being canned too often, so I, I'm hoping that these will be fine. Uh, there certainly is a recipe for them and that uh, 
it's not as though it's unheard of. It's just it doesn't seem to be as common as, say, uh, canning potatoes or other vegetables. I don't know why. It's an awfully very tasty uh, vegetable. Okay, so now we're taking it out any excess air, making sure we have an inch of headspace. We've got room for one or two more pieces here. That one there as well. I think we've got it all. One there. Okay. So, last time that we clean the rims with vinegar. Put on our lids. And rings. Better one. Very hot jars. It's actually cooler to pick them up by the ring. Okay, so I'm going to have to put a rack in, and these four will go on the top layer. drop my vinegar in here to stop my hands from going cloudy. Turn off the stove there. And put my candle lid on and wait for this to come to a vent. Where are we here? So now we wait for this to vent when we've got uh, full uh, steam coming out. We vent that for 10 minutes and then we bring this up to 10, 11 pounds pressure and we can for 30 minutes. And that's it for canning rutabaga.